it's pretty snowy outside at the moment. Okay, so what we discovered when we were re examining the results of our previous tests, tests uh, using the 43 km route is that it's too long, it flattens out the differences between the different heating methods. So what we are about to do is we are about to repeat the same test routine but using only a short route which doesn't allow the car to actually reach uh, full temperature inside or if it does, if it's really short time. So uh, yeah, maybe it will reveal any uh, something more. It's really cold already outside, it's almost el negative 11 degrees Celsius. But uh, again, what, what matters more is the difference between the diff different heating methods, not so much the uh, temperature. So, uh, okay, so this first one, first test is without heating, so the car is actually frozen. Uh, we haven't preheated it in any way, so it will be pretty damn cold. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so the car is frozen and <laughs> I will just set the temperature again to 20 and then uh, manual override of the uh, heating so it heats evenly. Uh, we try to get Maximum heat to the windscreen. We also have to use seat heaters. My wife is with me, so um, Yeah <laughs> We will try to see how long it takes to get this car warm and when it's nice and warm uh, And the, the windows are clear enough. We will start going So let's see how much power it actually takes one thing I need to mention is the range, so you can see the picture here, it's 94% the battery and I think 150 something kilometers of range based on the way that we have been driving and heating the car, so it's really consuming to drive in the winter when the heater is taking a lot of power, but 94%, so let's see what it is after the trip. Okay, so first trip is done, unpreheated car, totally from the cold. It takes a lot of power to heat the car, at least now when it's negative 11. Uh, yeah, uh, 12 kilometers trip. Uh, we lost 13% of power from the battery, that is a lot. And we lost 32 kilometers of range while driving 12 kilometers. So, yeah, I think this is a pretty good distance to do the test again. So, yeah, we will have a nice comparison. Okay, short trip, take two. We have been using the electric auxiliary heater. You can see that the windows of the car have been melted. And it's actually quite toasty inside. The heater is still running because I'm a little bit early. But that's okay. Okay, so it's uh, about negative 8 at the moment outside. But during the night it went to negative 13. So it has been quite cold for the car. But that's good. At least we will see the reality. <laughs> okay, we are ready to go. The car is really nice and warm inside, everything is dry. Even the steering wheel is warm. We have roughly 81% of battery left. In the car at the moment, 120 kilometers of range. So let's see what the test brings. <laughs> okay, so we are back. Uh, and there's a massive difference in the energy consumption as you might have expected. So, uh, on a preheated car, uh, we lost only, uh, only, what, 12 kilometers of range, or 11, you can see the picture here, and then uh, we still lost 12% of battery, but what is noticeable is that, uh, that the overall 
power consumption was really a lot less and the uh, air conditioning part that was the big deal you can really tell that the preconditioning the preheating that makes all the difference and um, yeah we will make the uh, excel sheet where you can actually see all the different data later but Based on this, there's there's a huge difference. <laughs> so, yeah. The same amount of region. There was no difference in the region, apparently. So, it doesn't matter if you preheat or not, you can still get the same amount of region. But that's because the preheat only heats, the auxiliary heater only heats the inside of the car. Meaning that the electric motor and the drive, they stay cold. So, if if it's cold enough so that there's no region, then there's no difference if you preheat or not with the auxiliary heater. But of course, if you use the car's own AC system to heat the car, it will also heat the coolant system. So it will also preheat the motor and the AC drive. So yeah, there's a, there's a small difference probably, but that will be our last test. So hopefully everything goes well and we can complete the test set. Okay. Okay, so our last test, the temperature is a little bit warmer now, no need for arctic clothing anymore, <laughs> uh, it's about negative 3 at the moment. The car is on, uh, the heating is on, it's using the AC on the car. Uh, there's a little bit of snow coming at the moment and uh, as you can see it doesn't really melt the same way on the windows as it, as it does with the electric heater but the car is still warm inside so I will just clear the snow on the car it's still running the heater so I'm not going to stop it I'm going to let it continue uh, it's a few minutes still but that will give me time to clear the snow okay the snow is more or less off the car now um, it looks like the preheating this time in negative 3 degrees, roughly, it took about 2% of our battery. So, we'll see how much it affects uh, driving itself, how much is the total consumption. But, for those of you who don't know, uh, the preheat when the car is not on, when you use the timed preheat, uh, the energy consumption does not show in the daily consumption figures in the app. So when you have a look at the schematics and charts in the app, uh, it tells you the daily power consumption and you can even see different trips, what is the difference between trips. But the problem is that if you use the preheat function, timed heating function, it doesn't show in there. So. That's all extra. So in this case, it's a, it's a minimum of 2% of battery. I don't know the exact amount because we can't see it anywhere. But yeah, let's take the test trip now. Uh, it's pretty snowy outside at the moment. Uh, but yeah, we had to use the seat heaters for a while and keep the fan running a little bit higher speed. Because, like I already explained before, the preconditioning doesn't actually heat the car properly. Everything that is plastic or fabric inside the car, it's really cold even after the preheat. So, in order to be like really comfortable and safe to drive, you need to use a little bit of heating. But yeah, now it's back to normal roughly and we have driven maybe half a kilometer. Okay, the trip is done. Uh, we lost a total of 9% of battery power and then 17 kilometers, if I remember correctly, uh, range. So, yeah, pretty much what I expected because it's a little bit warmer. Now it's 7 degrees warmer than the last time we tried. And... Uh, also, because we use the preconditioning, uh, the car's own heating system 
It also heats up the systems in the motor compartment. So, for instance, our region was a lot better now. than it was with the two other tests. So I suspect that that is a combination of the slightly warmer weather and also the fact that we used the preheat function. Uh, but yeah, so the finished results that you know already here, that I don't know, uh, in the charts, you can pretty much see that it's always worth it to actually preheat the car using auxiliary power. So not drawing the power from the main battery but it still pays off to use the preheat function so if you don't have external power you can't plug the car in it it actually pays to use the preheat function of the car's own ac because it will reduce a little bit the power consumption but mm, the difference is really small so it's a mainly a concern of comfort. And as far as the comfort, I can already tell you here that uh, even, even if you use the preheat function, uh, the comfort level in the car after the car is heated up, it's not, it's not even near to the use of the auxiliary electric heater because that will heat up all the materials in the car and uh, car's own preconditioning doesn't do that so the whole car is pretty much cold ice cold still like the steering wheel heat seats you need to heat the seats uh, there's so many differences that you don't have when you use the auxiliary heater uh, of course if you want you can use the preconditioning longer so you can get the car actually pretty good and hot but you need to use the heating function manually. So you need to uh, start it manually in the app and then uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes before you go, then the car will be a lot heat hotter inside and it will be nice and cozy, but that will eat a lot of battery. I might actually do a test of that also later sometime, but uh, this test was... Not uh, didn't go as well as I hoped because, uh, well, the nature doesn't care what you're trying to film, to be honest. So if you have a plan that requires the car to be cold every time you start it, uh, that requires like basically three identical days as far as the weather goes. And as you can see in the chart, it's impossible to gain. It's like every day is a little bit different. Day and night is a little bit different. Now we have snow, heavy snowfall. So, yeah, it's it's very, very difficult. And I, like I explained already in the beginning of this video, uh, we have tried this already. This is third time I tried this. And this time I just decided to test the whole thing anyway, despite the weather. But... Yeah, it's impossible to predict the weather, that's for sure. But I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. Uh, I, I hope you liked this video. And please follow us on Twitter also. So I will be posting all the charts and everything on Twitter. And it actually, they will be on Twitter before the video is released. So uh, always you can see something in Twitter that is not on the video or you get a glimpse of something faster there. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it and have a pleasant evening.